Career Education and Training Day. It's part moderated by Lakehead University and myself, Pete Hollings. Um, I thank our sponsors, it's the Thunder Bay CEDC and Canadian Tradex for sponsoring today's session. Um, <clears throat> if again, if you have questions, please uh, raise your hand using the, the feature in Zoom or post them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. I'd like to introduce now our speaker, uh, Melissa Hardy-Giles, who is owner of Origin. Origin is a really interesting company whose vision is to enhancing identity, purpose, and connection to career and culture. Um, I think as Kevin mentioned, they're doing some really exciting stuff. They are the creator of Immersive Link, a comprehensive virtual reality-based VR platform that was originally created for career, uh, as well as indigenous cultural awareness and diversity purposes. And having seen some of their stuff, it's, it's fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this talk. Uh, the system can be found in over a thousand schools, 80 nations, and in many other organizations. And with that, I'll hand over to Melissa. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this time, uh, Chimigwech. I just want to start off by recognizing that we're on uh, the Fort William First Nation territory, and I'm speaking to you from uh, my home. So I just want to thank you uh, for, again for the opportunity. Um, so yes, yeah, so my name is Melissa Hardy Giles, Indigenous Cause. I'm from Lake Helen Reserve, which is just outside of Nipigon. Um, I, we've been in business now for over 14 years, and uh, it's changed quite a bit, obviously, <laughs> uh, not even um, including COVID, but on, on top of everything, it's been a little bit crazy. Uh, we started with uh, our grassroots training, what is what I like to call it, because it's something that it's, we've never let go of. Um, I'd like to say that Origin has been uh, working on reconciliation and supporting reconciliation uh, for 14 years since since the uh, beginning. So now that uh, the entire country has kind of, um, you know, come along on it and we're all trying to do our best, I know, to uh, support Indigenous people and to include us at the economic table. And uh, so, yeah, so it's been pretty um, busy, of course. Like I said, we started off with our grassroots training. And then we knew that technology had to be uh, a part of our business because that's just the way the world is turning now. Um, and that was uh, probably about eight years ago, we introduced technology. And what we introduced at that time was heavy equipment simulators. Uh, Caterpillar um, has uh, heavy equipment simulators and they're basically exact replicas of the machinery the only difference is going to be the environment when the person's out in the field, um, but it moves, it, uh, it's very real. You can crash it. Um, it actually um, generates a report at the end to let you know how you did, whether you burnt, like how much fuel you burnt, um, you know, if you damage the machine even, uh, just your hand-eye coordination. So it was really awesome a tool for us to be able to bring to our First Nation communities to be able to show them, you know, basically a day in a life of different careers. Um, and, you know, you think about it now, now that we have uh, virtual reality, they seem like dinosaurs because they're pretty, they're pretty big. They're like the size of an office desk, I would have to say. Um, but they're, you know, they weigh a ton. Um, we've had to take them apart like transformers and uh, put them in uh, caravan uh, planes with OSEA to ship up north. Um, we've been on winter road tours with our mobile classroom. Uh, but we also knew that, like I said, their you know, technology kind of changes every, every second. So the second it's out, it's almost guaranteed to be outdated within a certain amount of time. Um, we, we knew that we had to stay ahead of the game in regards to, to, to technology. So, um, and we also didn't want to be pigeonholed for just um, to be heavy equipment, um, you know, work experience. We wanted to introduce as many experience and offer as many experiences as possible across Canada to, to everyone, you know. Um, yes, we did start working with and, and we still continue to. And like I always, I, I said before, our grassroots um, training and our why is to help our First Nation people, right? And uh, they deserve to be, you know, to have just as many opportunities as, as, as anyone in Canada. And um, 
the reason why virtual reality. It's mainly because we wanted to um, be able to not only bring these experiences to Indigenous communities and other rural communities as well, um, but we also know about the Wi-Fi and the internet, you know, in capabilities. Uh, so with the Oculus headsets, uh, we have the latest Quest 2s. Um, they are able to be standalone without Wi-Fi. So that was very, very important for us. We also um, wanted to, you know, especially with COVID, you know, everyone was, uh, was stuck at home. Everyone was, um, you know, want to experience different things. And at that time, pre-COVID, I would have to say, uh, like within four months before COVID, we actually uh, launched our virtual reality. And that was in October of 2019. And then we had actually moved to uh, Toronto, Ontario to try to scale the VR part of our business. Um, we were at that time, uh, I would have to say 90% in-person training and 10% uh, VR. So that's why we moved to Toronto to try to, to try to boost this and work with um, closer with industry. So when COVID hit, it was you know, obviously a shock, just like every, you know, just like everyone else. But as entrepreneurs, we were kind of like, you know, obviously <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. Um, fortunately, COVID actually catapulted our our virtual reality um, platform called Immersive Link. And maybe what I'll do now is I'll share my uh, screen and I'll play a couple of videos for you. Melissa, we're not hearing any sound. Oh, you don't hear the sound. Let's see here. I'm not sure how to share the sound on this. Let's see. I hear the sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I have to take off my earbuds. Do you know how I would share the sound on this video? I don't. I'm not familiar with Vimeo. So uh... streaming streaming video through Zoom is uh, always a bit of a challenge, uh, right. which is unfortunate. But um, it's a, it is unfortunate. But uh, video streaming through Zoom is. Let's sometimes see. problematic which is too bad oh there we go so maybe we can do, you know do it without the sound well it's kind of kind of explains it but let me see here totally agree with you i i i've i've and seen no so many of your videos it, it's <laughs> awesome <laughs> i'm like no one knows how to share the sound on here wow let's see Let me know if this works, Peter. Okay. Yeah, there we go. You're good. Sounds good. I had to take off the uh, earbuds. Hi, my name is Melissa Hardy Giles, and I was born and raised in Lake Helen Reserve. I'm here to tell you about Immersive Link, our experiential learning tool created here by our team at Origin. We highlight, capture, and preserve valuable Indigenous knowledge and traditions, which add to the fabric of Canada. We take all users on a virtual journey to experience a combination of unique Indigenous traditions and cultural practices. We promote diversity and a deeper understanding of our people and Indigenous worldviews. Miigwech for having me share our system with you. We'd be happy to have a conversation to see how we can work together.
Hi, my name is Melissa Hardy Giles, and I was born and raised on Lake Helen Reserve. My goodness. There we go. back to myself. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you're able to, to check out those two videos. I apologize for the uh, technical difficulty. I usually have that set right up. But yeah, so basically, uh, you got a little sneak peek of what of what we do. Those were, uh, one was a major uh, promo material, uh, one piece of promo material, and the other one was our new promo material for Newmont uh, uh, Mind mind. So what we do is we work with industry and we create these uh, virtual reality experiences. And the experiences are between three and five minutes long, normally. And what we do is we try to portray a day in the life in the career as, uh, as clearly as possible. This way we work with the actual workers on site. Um, they normally talk about, you know, what training they went to, uh, what training they had to complete, uh, the day in the life of, um, of being on the job. So some basic, um, you know, everyday uh, tasks they might have, and then they, they kind of show you around um, their work site. And then obviously with the 360, you can totally look, you know, all over the place. You can look down, uh, you can look up and in behind you. So you're basically um, immersed into the uh, experience, hence, hence the platform name, Immersive Link. So we have two libraries actually. Uh, we have a, a cultural library and a career library. And of course, we wanted to um, have as many career libraries as possible. And because of our reach, and you heard Kevin um, earlier say that we're in over a thousand schools, uh, we're actually up over um, 100, 100 um, First Nation communities now. Um, our headsets you can find from coast to coast, right from Labrador, right to uh, right to BC, to, uh, to Terrace, BC, and, um, and and all in between. So we knew we had a reach, and we knew uh, this was wanted, and we knew we had an audience. So the cultural piece was basically um, something that I wanted to do personally because I'm an Anishinaabe woman, and um, like I said, because of reconciliation, it, it all kind of supporting reconciliation, it all kind of um, wrapped into one. So it gave me the opportunity to add the cultural library along with our immersive link system. Um, that's um, basically what we do there is we work with Indigenous knowledge keepers across Canada to make their own uh, virtual reality experience. And basically what that is, is that, you know, say if you know, nowadays they have um, cultural awareness training where it's basically, you know, you tick the box. Okay, I, I did my uh, cultural awareness training for, for um, corporate. So now we'd like to introduce, you know, a virtual reality and, and that way in um, bringing this information. And what it is, is it's a library of, you know, it, just as many uh, cultural knowledge keepers as we have uh, career experiences and they basically, you know, you can learn about um, uh, drum making, you can learn about uh, full moon ceremony, you can learn about um, all of these different uh, thing, uh, all these different cultural practices that we have as Indigenous people. And like, again, you're, you're totally immersed in it and it's, it's real people and real stories. So um, we're really happy to, to be able to have immersive link right across, like I said, right across Canada and we're growing. And uh, like I said, COVID wasn't so good for 
for for many people and we're very grateful that it, that it was that it was good for us so um, our staff has tripled this year um, and we know that with the metaverse coming um, we're already in the works we have um, immersive leg 2.0 that's already in the works and that will be launched soon and what that will be is um, actually um, almost like augmented reality so for instance you know, we have um, one project where it's a school where you can take a tour of the school. However, you can also click on course outlines and you can click on um, different buildings and what's in that building. And you can, you know, where's student support services? Where's the gym? Where's, you know, so that's obviously a different um, platform compared to the uh, virtual reality experiences. But so stay tuned for 2.0. But uh, thank you very much, Chimi Gwech, and I just wanted to know if anyone had any questions. Thank you, Melissa. That was a great presentation, despite all the technological challenges you've worked <laughs> through there. That was, that was really good. Um, I don't see any hand. I had a quick question for you. Can you give us an idea of how long it takes to sort of on-site capturing a day in the life thing? How, how much time are you on site to do that? So basically, right from start to finish, uh, we start with storyboarding with the uh, with in industry, and uh, just so you know, they are the professionals in the in the business. We aren't. We're um, the videographers, and we have our uh, coders in the background to make everything work. However, uh, like I said, we start with you know. Um, sorry, storyboarding with the with the industry partner and uh, we have our crew on site and travel. And then we bring it back home after we um, film and filming could be anywhere from like a day or half a day, depends on the situation and, and what, um, what needs to be captured. But basically it, you're looking at six to eight weeks in total for the um, completion of an experience. Wow. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Um, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Um, we are going to have to wrap up and move on to the next session. I'm sure if anyone has questions for Melissa, you can find it through the, the conference website or through the company website. And I, I know they're very happy to chat about new ideas and, and new, new opportunities. And it's really cool stuff. So yeah, um, <laughs> it's great. Yes. I, sure. I just want to add my two cents, Melissa. Uh, as somebody, I, I Bought my Oculus headset back in January. I have not had it off since January. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do something with it every day. Boy, for those of you that uh, have not had an experience, uh, I'll, I'll just share this very quickly. We had a young boy uh, <clears throat> who uh, uh, is is on the autism spectrum, and we took him uh, on a on one of the uh, Oculus uh, uh, videos with with Batman, and he was sitting in the Batmobile and traveling around Gotham City, and he just he became so expressive and he was saying to his mother, mom, wow, I'm with Batman. Mom, wow, I'm, I'm over here. And she had never heard him so expressive because he was immersed in what he needed to, uh, to experience. And I, I'm, I'm so excited. I've, I've, I've come to learn as much as I possibly can about your company and boy, good on you. And uh, you're going to help change the world. So congratulations on just an amazing company. Uh, to me, Gwech, Kevin, those are kind words. And yes, I, I totally get it. It, it's, it gives us a, each and every person an opportunity to be able to experience it in, in the way that, you know, we see things as individuals. So it's, um, yeah. it's, it's my pleasure. So thank you very much, to me, Gwech, and I hope everyone has a great day. Outstanding. Peter? Thank you, Melissa. And uh, yeah, as, once again, folks, um, just remember to, to log out of this Zoom room and we'll go back to the main meeting site and we'll see you in the the next Zoom room for the, the final, final talk in this morning session. So see you all there. Thank you. Bye, everyone.